By now you probably know the good green. <laughs> um, we were a collective of um, event industry folks who are committed to um, eco-friendly and sustainable practices, which means a lot of different things. It's not necessarily just about the environment, but we're really excited that you're all here. And um, quickly before I turn it over to our amazing speakers for today, I wanna just remind everybody that we're in the process of launching a new uh, directory. Uh, it's a great place for like-minded vendors to um, connect. I'm gonna have uh, Natasha drop the, uh, link in our chat box, but basically it's a great space for um, vendors of all types and kinds to come and search for other vendors with um, eco-friendly practices and sustainability practices. So um, without further ado, I'm going to introduce our amazing speakers today. So we have Kendra Meany and Molly Culver. Uh, Kendra is the founder of Whole Weddings, which is an incredible design and paper goods company based in Connecticut. Uh, she does predominantly, well, no, exclusively seed paper, and it's really, really beautiful. I can attest to that fact. Um, all of my business cards come from her, and um, she's extremely creative and actually redesigned my last logo. So that's Kendra um, and Molly, <laughs> sorry. Um, and then we've also got Molly here today, of uh, Molly Oliver Flowers, who um, I've had the pleasure of working with a couple of times now. And she is an incredible florist based in Brooklyn. Although um, in COVID time, she is all over the Eastern corridor, <laughs> wherever we can find her everywhere. And she runs a really incredible floral design company that is really focused on sustainability and um, does really beautiful creative work. So I'm going to let the two of you take your session today. Um, I'm going to just hop off and I'll be back if you need me. Thank you so much, Ellen. Thank you, Ellen. Um, thank you, everybody, for being here on behalf of Kendra and I. Um, obviously, there is so much going on um, in our streets, in our country, in the world right now. And so we just want to thank you and honor you for being here with us today. And um, I want to personally say I'm in solidarity with the movement for Black Lives. And so um, I'm thinking of everyone who's out there um, putting their voice out there, putting their body out there. And, um, you know, in terms of this workshop, if you're feeling at any moment, obviously that you need to head out um, to take care of yourself or to take care of the community um, or to join in in protest, um, please feel free to reach out to me or to Kendra uh, separately or individually. And we're happy to share um, our experiences with you. So um, today we're going to start by just introducing ourselves and then we're going to share some slides and a few key things, um, common experiences that both Kendra and I have had um, since the pandemic really hit here in the U.S. and how that affected our businesses. Um, but obviously also we are continually responding to um, the current political crisis and I think as business owners, um, we're all trying to think really carefully and sensitively about how we respond. Um, and that is uh, sort of our goal today. And we hope to have time at the end for conversation and questions. And we really look forward to your questions. So please go ahead and, and put those in the chat as we go along. And we'll do our best to respond to them as we go along. And um, we'll just try to get through our, our slides as quickly as, ca as we can and, and get to those questions. So. Thank you. I'm going to turn it over to uh, Kendra to introduce herself more fully. Absolutely. So um, just a little bit about me. Um, I have spent the last 10 plus years in graphic design um, in various forms and entering into weddings um, was a really new thing. I sort of did on a whim um, after a styled shoot and I really fell in love with it. 
And so um, it just kind of coincided. I wasn't planning on doing anything in the really anything eco-friendly at the time, but um, it sort of happened that you know my husband and I were moving a lot and really evaluating our waste, and that kind of was a perfect storm as the time I was trying to um, figure out what I wanted to do with stationery, and I couldn't. Um, be doing these things in my personal life and then have my business not follow. So um, it really kind of became um, a mission for me to make less waste, um, but also to honor tradition um, of what so many people love about printed stationery. Um, and I'm a good, I find that it's a good in between for people who don't want to go fully digital, but they want to make less waste um, in the process. And so um, that's sort of how this whole thing got started. <laughs> um, and yeah, to you, Molly. Cool. Thank you. Um, so I'm Molly Culver and I run Molly Oliver Flowers, which is a sustainable floral design company based in Brooklyn. Um, I'm originally from Connecticut and that is where I am now. I happen to be mid apartment search when the social distancing guidelines kicked in middle of March. And so I am still kind of operating my business from my childhood home. Um, and so my story is that I actually, um, I would say out of college, I um, was just interested in um, learning more about the world, how the world works. I actually uh, moved abroad to Chile for a year and um, studied Spanish. And I would say that was really there in my early 20s when I started thinking about the ways um, racism and environmental destruction were all intertwined and connected. And um, I came back to the States and worked for a few years in um, social justice work around food, food justice specifically. Um, and you may hear chickens in the background. I apologize <laughs> if you can hear Brewster. Um, so, after doing that work on the ground and actually really learning a lot about white privilege at that time in my life, um, I connected with a lot of uh, people who were growing food in their communities, um, in the Bronx and different parts of New York City, fell in love with growing and ended up moving to California, studied organic farming and thought I was going to become a full-time organic farmer. And so it was, um, really sort of in like 2005, 2008, that I started farming and growing flowers. And I was introduced to flowers and just really found my true love, um, not only connecting with communities and growing food, but connecting with flowers. Um, they really lit me up from the inside. And so um, I ended up deciding that kind of isolated life on a farm was not for me. I wanted to get back with the communities that were doing change work, social justice work in the city, and move back to the city um, in 2010. And right around that time, I launched Molly Oliver Flowers somewhat informally. Um, of course, all my friends thought because I was a flower farmer, I knew how to do weddings. And that wasn't entirely true. Um, but it has now been roughly eight years I've been doing weddings in Brooklyn. Um, all types of events, not exclusively weddings, um, but all with the goal in mind of supporting local farmers, local flower farmers, um, reducing waste in every aspect of the chain. So uh, delivery within the studio, during the event, post event. Um, and I still teach around Brooklyn, um, different uh, organic growing classes and have been offering those classes still at this time. Um, but yeah, my business has certainly changed quite a bit in nature um, since the pandemic began. So I'm happy to share what that process was like for me today. Awesome, okay. So yeah, um, so one of the things that we wanted to start out with, we have um, five points that we're gonna talk through, but. Um, the first one is sort of taking into account that the nature of our jobs um, are changing. I think it's really helpful to figure out um, what is essential during this time and really who is essential during this time. 
So um, focusing on who needs your business um, right now. Cool. So is that back to me? Yeah. Yep. We're going to both share, um, but I'll let you go first, Molly. Yeah, sure. And I think before I, I kind of dive in here is is just for me, when I read the word pivot, like to me, it felt like such a jargony word. And, mm -hmm. um, and I would say that, you know, I think everybody's in that that position right now and trying to think about how to respond. So I'm trying to think about it more as like how to respond to the needs of the people who are interested in my work or people who need flowers, but also the farmers that I'm connected to that my business very much depends on. Um, I try to think holistically about these things. Um, so just a note on sort of how I'm thinking about Pivoting is more about responding to the needs of those in my community, as well as thinking about how my business needs to be in business and be sustainable. So um, always it's about people and the planet over profit for me. So um, yeah, so what pivoted and what didn't, you know? I, I did have a major product pivot um, but I didn't pivot my values. I think for me, the constant that remained was um, my interest in supporting farmers, farmers that respect the land. Um, and and also, um, you know, trying to get folks flowers in a way that is um, as waste free as possible. Um, and certainly in the time of um, COVID-19, trying to think about how to do that safely. So I think I mentioned I'm mainly an event florist. I've always done roughly 30 to 40 event, events per year um, in Brooklyn. Um, and when the pandemic struck, I was really, you know, I think the first response was concern about safety um, for myself, for, for my family and for clients. Um, but I immediately also started thinking about farmers because they had fields planted with thousands of blooms that were slated to be purchased by florists like me, by wholesalers, and kind of decorate the tables of all the many events that were then postponed and canceled. And of course, uh, farmers can't postpone harvest. Once you invest money, um, you can't get it back. And so this is why globally we saw farmers plowing in fields. But here on a local scale, I thought that um, I had the ability to be nimble. Um, I just needed to know whether I could somehow get those flowers from the farmers and get them to folks um, in the city who I had a hunch could really use a little bit of cheer in their lives being stuck at home. And um, and I also was thinking about the folks who are my community, the people who might be interested in flowers at this time. And I wanted to know whether they felt safe to receive flowers. Um, so um, I did, kind of do some soul searching. I and the, There's a, an image there from my Instagram about kind of how I openly grappled with this question about what people felt safe about, you know, receiving flowers and then also are flowers essential and really, really like allowing myself to sit with this question. Like as a business owner, this is really uncomfortable. This is really hard seeing my entire calendar disappearing, but you know, what is essential in this moment and having to ask those hard questions um, but what I found was in sharing that vulnerability with my audience through Instagram, through social media, um, because that was my one <laughs> mode at that point, much has changed in the last month um, in terms of communication modes with clients. But the response was, yes, we would really love flowers and we are comfortable receiving them contact free. So when Cuomo um, announced that small retail businesses could do curbside contact free delivery, I quickly um, pivoted for lack of a better word mm. and organized um, what I'm calling the seasonal flower project. So um, I would say that, and then also just leaning on my background as a farmer. I also um, right up in the beginning, um, put up some by donation classes for folks stuck at home. Um, this isn't entirely out of my uh, purview. It's something I do normally as teach around the city, but I had never offered that product visually, visibly um, on my website. So also upgrading to a commerce website and figuring out how to add a donation button, all of this was new for me. 
Yeah, thank you. I feel like those are really good, um, really good ways to pivot. <laughs> um, and uh, hang on one second. And um, yeah, I kind of had um, maybe not the same situation, but um, but a similar situation of I was still able to um, keep my existing couples and um, really kind of pivot my products to keep the conversation going between couples and their wedding guests. So, um, and a lot of it started really as coming back to them and having these conversations um, and just in a weird way, um, becoming a little bit more like a therapist, you know, of acknowledging that this time is not at all how um, any of us, any of us have pictured it, um, but especially this important um, time in their lives, that it's not the reality that they had imagined. So um, really coming to them and with empathy saying, you know, what can I do to make this easier? And the answer um, was really that every situation was a little bit different, but I was able to kind of start with, well, if you do plan on postponing, I can provide a graphic for you that would at least be able to help you uh, work through that. And so the blue graphic that you see up there is a free download on my website um, for anybody. You don't have to be um, a couple of mine um, to use. And I can slightly customize it to your colors and have your name on it um, if that helps you to um, if any of you are planning a wedding and it helps you to um, communicate that. Um, and then really I just started with individual couples saying, do you need postponement graphics or change the date graphics for um, your email or for a physical mail? Um, not everyone has um, is really tech savvy or has access to email. Um, not all of your guests are, are maybe attuned to that. So sometimes it's really good to still send physical mail. So that was where doing change the date postcards and, um, and graphics really specific to their situation um, was really helpful. And then noticing that some people are going to elope um, and that's become a really big um, part of, of what's happening now. So I was, I'm able to offer um, po uh, postcards, or um, other types of mail that um, would act as an announcement. So if you've had a small elopement um, or an intimate wedding during this time and you just want to be able to acknowledge it to the family and friends that could not be there, um, that's definitely an option too. Um, so definitely looking at what the immediate needs are right now and then knowing who you serve and, and really how you can honor this time for them. Um, so yeah, so. Um, I think we're going to ask a little Q and a, um, in the comments. Yeah. And I, I think, um, just to summarize here, you know, what Kendra and I were, have been talking about thus far, and I really appreciate Kendra, what you're saying about empathy. Um, I think I failed to mention that right in the beginning, you know, I think I had probably the customary small business owner panic attack of like yeah. what happens financially, like this is real, this is a business, this is my livelihood, you know. Um, but then taking a, a step back and and obviously reflecting on, um, you know, just empathizing with clients. And um, at that time, I think, none of us really knew and still don't know like kind of what the fallout from all of this is mm -hmm. and just connecting with people in a real way like sending a personal email just to say you're thinking of them and find out what their needs are because i think it all it, right. it all does come back to um understanding that because of this health crisis and also this political situation the needs of our clients have changed and so how do we adapt to that and how do we resource ourselves and how do we learn from our customer base and our followers and our community about what it is that we can offer at this time? Um, and I think that's how we can start to glide through this. 
um, as gracefully as possible. And so just a few thoughts to folks, um, tools that we used, you know, just email, regular old email, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. actually a uh, phone call, you know, suggesting a phone yeah. call one, -on one is also a great way to connect with your clients um, and get their feedback. Um, and then, you know, also free tools like SurveyMonkey, SurveyMonkey, Google Forms, which I find pretty clunky and difficult to use sometimes, but hey, it's there and it's free. Right. Um, and there's also some more pricey, like kind of paid for um, survey tools that you can use to gauge your audience. Um, and certainly in social media, um, you know, I think for me in this current time of grieving and time of protest, it has been eye opening for me as I've been vulnerable in posts um, just to see the response. And I've learned a lot from kind of putting myself out there. And I think that's another way is through comments and direct messages on Instagram and just really taking in the feedback in whatever form it's coming um, as you start to formulate like how you might want to shift, how you might want to change and what new product you might want to offer. Absolutely. I don't know if we have any um, people in the comments. I don't see any yet. I don't okay. Have any questions. Okay, great. Um, well, I can either move on or kind of give people a little bit more time. Let's keep going and I'll let you know if there's... Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, sounds great. Yeah, so... Um, like we had both kind of touched upon that I think once you sort of know who you really need to serve right now, you have this opportunity to then create some new products and offers to really fit this time and make it um, really pertinent and personal to what um, what their needs are and how you can serve them. So um, I know Molly and I both have um, a little bit of different uh, ways that we've done this. And so uh, we're excited to kind of share that with you. Yeah, and thanks for manning the slides. Woman yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> if it's a little slow, it's just because I'm like moving between tabs. <laughs> it's a brave new world. We're it in. is, yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I think as I, I mentioned before, I started a new project called the Seasonal Flower Project. Um, this involved me upgrading my Squarespace account to commerce, which was sort of an overnight learning curve. Yeah. <laughs> There's been a lot of fast learning curves um, in this time, but also more time to do things like this that um, in sort of the grind of the wedding season, I often felt like as a small business owner, I never had the time to do. I think that's debatable. <laughs> Has to do with time. Yeah, time. it does. But <laughs> but but yeah. So um, this the seasonal flower project is a subscription of locally grown flowers, and I don't know if there's any florists on this um, webinar today, but I hope there are. And um, it seemed to me like you know a way that I could support farmers. Um, again, I got the go ahead, the green light that there were folks in the city that were interested in this, so I didn't feel necessarily like I was going through a ton of effort for, you know, no return. Um, I did definitely crunch a bunch of numbers before I launched this um, and thought very carefully about how to set it up. But essentially it's um, curbside flower deliveries delivered on Fridays um, to folks across the city. We're going to all four, we're not all five boroughs, but four boroughs, not Staten Island, yet um as it's a little expensive to get over there uh with the additional tolls um and and so i send out um also a weekly newsletter this is also a new thing i had to upgrade to be able to um do marketing campaigns on squarespace um so you know another one of those moments where this you know pandemic kind of pushed me to grow in a new way which i think was really good for me um and the project has really helped me honestly connect to my deepest values as a florist, which is supporting small farmers who support the earth and supporting the growth of local economies and local green jobs. Um, and so it's also allowed me to connect with vastly more people than I normally would in a given calendar year, which has been 
an incredible surprise. You know, I typically would have 30 to 40 individual clients um, or households that would book me in a year. And now um, I'm delivering flowers to 120 households. Wow. Um, I never would have imagined that there would be that much interest. And I don't know how long it's gonna go for as things are opening up. Um, so I'll just try to stay you know, in tune with that and continue to adapt as we go along. Um, so it's been critical for revenue to cover my rent. Um, and I've been able to put my wedding deposits aside. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. That was something that was really keeping me up at night. Um, it's allowed me to employ a few out of work freelancers, which has been really meaningful. Um, like I said, it's grown my audience and um, it's grown, it's helped me to grow awareness about the slow flowers movement and intersectional environmentalism, which hashtag check it out on, in on Instagram. There's a lot going around about this. Um, just looking at the intersection of race and environmental destruction. So, um, yeah, it's been all around, I feel like a win-win and hopefully win for folks who are receiving flowers. Absolutely, it sounds wonderful. <laughs> if um, There's been challenges. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I'm not that far from you, so I feel like I should come, <laughs> I should come like get flowers at some point. Yeah, there's um, new challenges new... every day, so I don't want to sugarcoat it. Yeah, I I'm sure. Um, yeah, I think for me, um, really the first thing that I knew that I could offer, um, as I mentioned before, were change the date postcards and um, postponement graphics and things like that, that really kind of met those immediate needs. Um, but then it's also been kind of nice to have um, the time and the space to really evaluate what I could offer um, long, kind of more long-term as a business even though I am still helping people short term. So the, um, like you mentioned, opening up an e-commerce um, site that was really new for me. And I had put it on the back burner for a really long time. And then I finally just said, I was like, you know what, if, if I'm not gonna do it now, I'm never gonna do it. So, um, so I was able to just do that and be able to sell um, a lot of vow books um, and cards and things like that. Um, it's been really nice to also reach out to photographers and wedding planners and be able to say, can I offer something to you for your couples? Um, so doing custom um, items that I might not have had maybe the time to do during a full wedding season has been really nice to be able to offer that. And I think it gives them a little bit something more personal um, and heartfelt to be able to give their their couples during this time. So. That's been really amazing. And I would also say, because I don't outsource any of my printing, um, it's been nice to be able to scale down some of my packages um, to be able to fit what um, smaller intimate weddings are happening right now. So it's been nice to be able to take some couples that really just might need 20 invitations for their small event but maybe they might have overlooked me because they would have said, oh, she's either too busy or she can't take on that small of a job or whatever. But um, it's been really nice to serve to serve them um, in this way, too. So it's been kind of really nice all around um, of just having this opportunity. So um, um, there's a question for you, Kendra. Oh, there's a question for me, which is, can you ship to Mexico? Um, international shipping is really difficult um, for some reasons. Um, the main reason being that seed paper is a product, the, especially the seed paper that I use, um, the seeds are non-invasive, but they are native to North America. So I have always personally felt a little strange, um, and maybe strange isn't the word, but I've always felt a little not fully sure as to what the customs regulations are about sending technically plants, because that's, I guess, technically what they are, even though they're in seed form, um, from two other countries. So what I have suggested in that case um, is I have a wildflower um, a paper mix that is 
um, what I would not necessarily recommend, but there is an herb mix that has parsley, basil, and chives. So that is, I think, non-invasive enough in its of its own right, but I also think that it's not the type of thing that if you planted it in another region, that it would have any negative impact on the ecosystem there. And I'm sure Molly can kind of speak to this a little bit more. Um, but yeah, so if I can, yes, I can technically send to Mexico. Um, I can get mail to Mexico. Um, it just would really be that um, I would prefer to use the herb paper instead. But that's not to say that I have not at some times, um, depending on the situation, I have sent wildflower paper um, to other places, but it's not something I really want to do. And now that I've learned a little bit more, um, I sort of am steering clear of that. But hopefully that answered your question and I can um, get in touch with you um, more in the sessions if that helps, if you have any more questions about that. Yeah, and Eloisa, she uh, has one other question oh, okay. for me, um, just about how to get started on um, different ways to be responsible about waste for weddings um, and where to start. And I'll say that I think there are a lot of resources out there. Um, I personally uh, try to compost everything in my studio and post events. So I'm working with local farms and compost collection services to take that waste uh, mm. because um, Organic waste, at least in New York City, is 20 or 30 percent of our waste stream, mm -hmm. and it contributes hugely to off-gassing um, in landfills and creating uh, more CO2 off-gassing and climate change, global warming, all the things. So, um, mm -hmm. thinking about ways to compost as a florist, um, I also um, reuse vessels. Uh, so I don't buy in new vessels every single event. I keep an inventory. I, I've grown an inventory of diverse aesthetics of, of, of vessels um, that I'll reuse and return to the end uh, to the to the event at the end of the night to recollect. Sometimes clients return them to me. Um, we've come up with different arrangements. And then Eloisa, as you mentioned, going foam free is great and um, avoiding any toxic chemicals or non biodegradable substances. Um, and there's lots of resources. So I'll just point to the Sustainable Floristry Network, um, Slow Flowers. Um, you know, uh, what else can we point to? There's many. Um, feel free to message me offline and I can share more. And I think I'll also shout out um, Kara at Three Notch Florals. She does incredible work as a sustainable florist here in New York and has a lot of resources on her website. Um, so check out Three Notch Florals and feel free to message me offline. Um, and so our next slide is just asking you all to maybe take a minute to think about what product you might create. And we'd love to see if you have thoughts already in the mm. chat, you know, just yeah. put in there, like what you're already thinking about. We don't have a sense of who's in the room. We wish we had gotten right. to get, get a poll going to know. Um, we know that there might be all different types of vendors here today, um, but please feel free to share um, anything that you're thinking about uh, doing differently or, you know, offering. And that doesn't necessarily need to be a physical product, but it could be a consultation, a type of consultation that you're doing. Um, you know, there's lots of ways to recreate in this moment. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that I was listening to Praise's um, talk last night, and um, yeah, she had a lot to say about different types of products that you could offer, not necessarily physical, but mostly digital. So guides and um, templates and webinars and classes and all of that, those kinds of things that, um, you know, I know we're, our focus is, um, is mostly on physical goods, but there's lots of other things that you could, could do. So let's see if there's a... Oh, 
Oh, oh, you did it. Oh, you're like on it. <laughs> I'm trying to read the chat and then you're like, you already did it. I'm on it, girl. You're on it. Okay, cool. So um, I think if there's no other comments, um, I'm going to move to the next slide. Um, so one of the things that I th and maybe both of us have um, encountered is that we've had the ability to really branch out and see if we can serve different audiences. So um, maybe outside of the wedding space that we might typically um, typically be serving. So, and that's always exciting just to get people, new, new people who might never have thought of your products um, or your business, but they are maybe now new clients because they've found you um, during this time. So um, I will, show what you have Molly. Okay, yeah, so um, definitely new audiences in different kinds of ways. Um, so I guess the first thing I offered that was a little new and different were the seed starting classes. And um, while teaching organic farming skills is not new for me, um, my focus has largely been on teaching adults over the last 10 years and um, but I was thinking about, you know, adults are home with their kids. And so why not offer a seed starting class for kids with their parents, as well as a class that's specifically for adults. Um, I knew I had enough experience working with young people that I could do something sort of tailored um, and more simple to do with kids. And that was great. It got a nice little turnout. I think we had about um, eight different families on a Zoom webinar for that first uh, kids workshop. And it was really sweet the families that stayed in touch with me. Um, another way I've found a new audience is just literally geographically. Um, because I'm physically in Connecticut and not um, going back and forth between New York and Connecticut, I have a team in New York who are um, making the flower project go. Um, I'm here in Connecticut and um, have an existing community of my mother's friends, my grandmother's friends, my sister who lives in New Haven. Um, and because I'm here, I've been able to connect with flower growers that are based here in Connecticut and kind of continue to amplify the voices of farmers um, and the story of slow flowers, um, not only from New York, but also from Connecticut and share with my audience what Connecticut farmers are doing and. It's been really fun for me um, to connect with those folks here. Uh, and then I think also, I, for me, this isn't necessarily a new audience, I don't think, but I think just communicating my values, um, my political views at this time feels really critical and important and necessary for me. So if anything, I think I'm tapping more into my why and my passion, um, which is about racial justice and environmental justice, um, that those are sort of the, the, the cornerstone things in my heart that drive me to do the work that I do. And so speaking on that um, and just paying more attention, of course, um, as a white woman trying to um, learn more and share resources and diversify my feed and all of that is really helpful information for me and helps me grow as a person. And um, so I think just sharing that process with my audience has felt a little bit new um, in that I've been stepping it up more. Um, and I wanna continue to do that regularly, not just as a moment in time. Um, so yeah. Absolutely, yeah. I think that's really awesome. I think the kids' classes are really cool too. <laughs> Um, so yeah, um, for me, I think because I sell a lot, I mean, physical goods, but it's just a, a different physical good, <laughs> I guess. Um, like I mentioned before, starting an e-commerce store, which was um, a completely really new thing for me, but also putting new products in there that reach a whole different um, thing. I had originally started... Um, branching out of my corporate design job, um, I had a very 
small, small business um, making greeting cards. And actually with planable paper, really before I ever used planable paper for wedding stationery. Um, so it's kind of weird to come full circle, but um, so in the shop, really, people had asked me around Mother's Day, I wasn't planning on making um, any kind of Mother's Day cards, but a few people reached out and I was like, well, I guess I could do this. And so um, I put a couple Mother's Day cards up on the shop and they seem to do really well. And so I've been adding um, a little bit as I go along. And um, people have asked about um, baby showers. A lot of people are doing like drive through you know, baby showers and things like that. And so that's been an opportunity to kind of serve um, some friends and family who um, who are going through that. Um, creatives have reached out to me through Instagram. Um, the top right corner there is a woman who um, published, this is her second book that she's published now. And so she had the idea for um, some planable cards as a giveaway for pre-orders for her book. Um, and then of course, like still within the wedding industry, I've been able to like do stationery for um, businesses for people who need business cards or marketing pieces during this time. And so I think as people are sort of reevaluating their businesses, I think it's given me a little bit of um, opportunity to work with people and kind of figure out what, what they necessarily need um, to further their businesses in terms of, of stationary pieces. So, um, and of course, like Ellen was sharing before, I had the opportunity to do her cards last year. And so I don't think business cards are dead. I think that they just need to be really purposely done and um, and have meaning and have, um, have a real reason for being. And, and if they can serve multiple purposes, I'm, I'm always down for that too. So, um, yeah, so that's really how I think a lot of my um, products have come about in this season. So, um, yeah, so we want to know how can you, what products could you create? You know, what, who else could use your products? Yeah, who are you not thinking about? Um, or what, what can you create um, to serve a new audience? Um, Uh, yeah, if there's not a ton of comments yet, um, I'll probably just keep going because I know we're. Yeah, let's go. We want to like be able anything. to do more of a Q and A. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, this the fourth of our five um, topics here are really finding new ways to connect with our audiences, and I think you know you touched upon that a little bit earlier, Molly. Um, with uh, emails and Google Forms and, and that kind of stuff. And, um, and definitely Instagram has been a way to do that, um, especially right now, um, about your why and your products and really all of it. So I'll let you go first if you want. Okay. Um, okay, so new things I did, new ways to connect. Um, there's been a lot of that going on for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. I, uh, because I was suddenly developing multiple new products, I had the classes, and now I had the seasonal flower project deliveries. Um, it felt like time to create a link tree. So for those of you who are in the webinar that don't know what that is, it's basically a tool so that for the link in bio on Instagram, um, and there are different platforms out there, um, not only Linktree, but there are other ways to go about doing this. But essentially when they click on that link, it leads them to a bunch of other links. And you can name those links um, as the products or the causes or the articles that you're trying to put in front of people. So, um, I added a link tree, which enabled folks to see clearly, okay, in a, and go directly to the curbside flower project page, the seed starting classes page, et cetera. Um, 
I also, as I mentioned, I started a newsletter. Um, I had kept a journal up on my website somewhat irregularly, but now with the seasonal flower project, I'm sending a newsletter out every Friday and I'm just using the campaign platform on Squarespace, which I'm actually finding to be fairly simple and easy. Um, again, that was another upgrade, but it felt worth it. And there has been a lot of engagement um, and just the ability to share information and really, um, the newsletter has been powerful just in that that is where I feel like I've really been able to share who I am and how I approach floristry. Um, so I'm highlighting farmers each week with a different highlight, um, highlighting our drivers and really bringing some humanity to the folks who are doing this sort of hard work of doing deliveries right now in this time. Yeah. Um, sharing slow flowers news, so news about what's going on in the sustainable floristry realm. And then just sometimes like an essay or a thought or amusing by myself. Um, I started using the hashtag seasonal flower project um, and I put that in the newsletter. So that has been an awesome way to connect with the people who've subscribed and kind of becomes like a weekly conversation as they um, are invited to tag the farmers and use the hashtag seasonal flower project um, to bring them all together sort of in a visual space. Um, and that has been really uplifting and just lovely to see all the different ways that people are designing with their flowers at home. Um, and I also used IGTV for the very first time um, uh, to do a little uh, video of myself doing some basic flower care tips and included that as a link in the newsletter, also posted it on Instagram. And um, there was some great feedback from that as well. So. I'm becoming a little bit more um, confident <laughs> and skilled in using those things. Still got a lot to learn, but um, yeah, a lot of new ways, a lot of tools that have been out there for some time that I hadn't been using. Absolutely. Yeah, it was funny when we like were that. discussing this more um, and we had both uh, kind of filled out separately, you know, this slide of what we were going to do. And I looked back at it and I was like, oh my gosh, we basically did like the same things. So, which I thought was really interesting. And I thought that was good to highlight um, together here. And um, so like you mentioned using Linktree, I use um, Tailwind, which is a um, social media scheduler, but they have a similar thing called Smart Bio. And um, so you can, has links at the top where you can click on, but then it also has links per um, for each of your posts too. So if you post something and you want to link back to um, to a different uh, page or um, a blog post or whatever, you can link it visually through what you're what you're showing on your feed. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, same thing. Doing um, IGTVs, it was my first like live planting tutorial um, of paper. I've obviously like shown people how to do it. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, showing people how to do it, you know, just verbally um, with my with my couples and things like that. But it was really nice to show it in a um, in a visual form and and to really an be able to answer questions and kind of walk through it. And I've been showing my progress, you know, on Instagram stories kind of as it goes along, because it is a slow process from from seed to actual flowers, you know. Um, so and I think a lot of people think that they want that sort of instant gratification, but it it really isn't, you know, it's not like a, it's not like a day later you get, <laughs> you know, you get something. So um, so that's been really kind of fun to, to watch people post also their, um, plantings and like what they are growing. And somebody sent me an email the other day of, um, a child, uh, their niece or nephew, I'm assuming, um, who had just planted, uh, some stationery that she had sent out for her wedding. So I thought that was really Aww. sweet that she shared, shared the video. It was like, or photos. It was really cute. Really cool. I'm definitely excited to share them um, on Instagram with you all. But yeah, so I did, um, I created a hashtag kind of for people to share what they do. So it's called whole wet in the wild. And um, I am using that not only to share on Instagram, but to share um, a page on my website. So like if you submit a photo using whole wet in the wild, or even just tagging me, 
um, on Instagram, I'll ask you, you know, if I can put it on our website. And I also have it in my highlights on Instagram too. So it's been really fun. I think it, it engages people in a way that incur I think it encourages you regardless of whether you're, um, a, a green thumb or not, you know, I think like anybody can sort of start. And I know, you know, this Molly of sort of, you just have to begin, you know, you just have to start somewhere and you're going to make mistakes. And it's, it's, you know, just to kind of have fun with it. And so I think this has really brought a lot of joy, um, certainly to me, but I know it's brought a lot of joy to the people that I interact with right now. So, and we can all use that <laughs> always way more of that. So, yeah. um, yeah. So I think we both wanted to ask like what ways you all are reaching out and yeah. So I'll let you, if you have any more on that, Molly. Uh, no, I think that covers it. Um, there are so many ways to reach out Absolutely. to clients these days. Um, but for me, it's definitely been, um, really enlightening just to connect more one-on-one -on -one with many people and, and kind of feel that I can branch out creatively as a business as well. Right. Um, so um, I'm seeing a comment here okay. from Pam that we transitioned our business to serve weddings um, and business to business last year, having found a good fit in both sectors, only having to pivot back to direct to consumer this year, have to stay nimble. So yeah, thank you, Sam, for that. I think um, mm. being nimble is key and kind of, again, responding to the circumstances of our time um, and the changing needs of of the community um, is, is how you kind of stay sustainable um, as a business. Um, so uh, thank you for that. And I think we just have one more little point and then we're going to... Uh, yeah transition into a q a yeah absolutely so um our last point to make is really moving to a giving mindset and i think we're all in that space right now just being as what's happening we realize that the best that we have to offer is just love and and just putting ourselves out there a little bit more and and giving in any way we can so um so yeah so i i think molly you can talk about um, what you were able to, how your mindset has maybe increased, not to say that it's changed, but it's probably increased during this time. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, you know, there is that, you know, sort of feeling of that tension right now that, um, suddenly we're, suddenly we're seeing, um, sort of the movement for black lives front and center and the demands for the calls for justice. But, I know, and I know many of you know on this call that that has been ongoing in, in history for many, many, many years, hundreds of years, right. in fact. Um, and so for me in my business, I am constantly trying to think, I think within capitalism, trying to figure out ways to balance what I'm taking, um, what, I'm, what I'm giving back mm. as I'm taking. So that goes for you know, all facets of inputs in my business. When I think about what I'm investing in and what I rely on, what sustains me and my business and how, um, what I, you know, what I'm kind of, what renewable, non-renewable resources am I literally dependent on and how can I give back? I think that's one level for me is sort of this environmental level. Um, the other level for me is social and sort of recognizing my, the privilege I have as a white person, as an able-bodied person, as a highly educated person, highly in the sense that I went to college, right? Like I have various privileges um, and how do I use that privilege for change um, to create a more equitable world? And so I do think that platforms are power. And so um, even if, you know, I think, I feel like my following is relatively small um, in the grand scheme, but I also think that any following at all is, is power and so um i try to use the privilege and what power i do have to communicate these values that i have to find um commonality with other vendors and with my audience um and to share resources um 
and to uplift the voices of florists of color, to redirect folks to florists of color, for example. Um, and so already in my own work, when I haven't been able to um, do a wedding, if I haven't been available, I've very point pointedly been directing um, customers and clients towards florists of color um, because I don't see them being represented equally right. in the wedding industry. Um, so that is one like small act of reparations that I can do. Um, I've been using my link tree to highlight causes, not only products. So I've been using my link tree, I think right after Ahmad Arbery's killing, I, I really felt like I wanted to send flowers to his family. And um, I looked up his obituary, I got in touch with the funeral service and um, they were indeed still receiving flowers. So I advertised that. Wow, that's really nice. Um, I've just been using stories right now to, you know, again, repost and share resources, information about protests, about where to donate right now. There's so many incredible causes out there. Um, too many. Yeah. <laughs> that we could possibly cover them all. Um, yeah. And then also just accessibility. So um, trying to offer classes a sliding scale or by donation. Um, doing a, a weekly giveaway to essential workers. We've done that from the first week of the seasonal flower project. So just creating a little um, mm -hmm. questionnaire box for followers to nominate an essential worker. And then we will deliver two bouquets a week to some essential worker. And that could be a work really clerk, a, you know, a sanitation worker, a nurse, a doctor. Um, and that's been great. And so I've also been donating um, percentages of sales this week to Black Lives Matter. 100% um, of donations for seed starting class this Saturday will go towards um, Black Lives Matter. And so, you know, and, and just in general, my business has a practice of allocating funds every year to various environmental and social causes okay. that I believe in. Absolutely, yeah. Those are all amazing, amazing, amazing things. Um, yeah, I think, um, I know we have to, I'm going to, I'm so for, sorry to cut yeah, you off that's here, okay. Kendra. Nope. So, uh, I'm we're at our end. Minutes. We're, yeah, we're, we're just a minute after two. So we did start a couple minutes mm -hmm. late. So I'm going to let you finish up your thought, Kendra, and then we're going to direct every, um, everyone over to the sessions where you can, we can continue to sort of have yeah. this conversation. It'll be a little bit more, um, one-on-one. -on -one. So, um, Basically, Kendra, go ahead and um, jump in with your last thought, and then I will explain to everybody how to hop into the sessions. Yeah, um, so I guess just to follow up, um, the this year was the 50th um, anniversary of Earth Day, so um, I felt like I wanted to kind of do something to commemorate that, but then it really started became um, a passion project of doing 50 days of giveaways. Um, sometimes they're really small things. Sometimes they started out as a little bit bigger thing of doing kind of like a zero waste kit. Um, and you could see that on the left there. And then most of the time it's just little things like bookmarks or a pet illustration or a graphic for your phone or, <laughs> you know, something. But it's just like a creative thing to do every day. And um, this week, obviously, the, the giveaway has stopped for the people entering on Instagram, but I've been giving to um, Black Lives Matter and um, the ACLU and just finding other organizations to give throughout the week. So if anybody wants to hit me up with um, some more places to give, I'd love to, um, to continue that this week um, in lieu of the, the giveaways that I was doing on Instagram. So, um, but we can definitely talk about that more in the session. So hopefully, um, I don't know if we can see the comments, the chats, because I know people wrote in the chat and I feel like I need to quickly like read it because <laughs> I don't know if it's like going to, it'll go I mean, away. But, um, I know. I think you'll still have access actually to the, to the chat, chat box okay. in the session. Cool. Oh, good. Um, right. So um, to let everybody know what's going to happen, um, basically um, Natasha, who's our amazing back end AV person that you all can't see. Um, she is gonna um, turn on the sessions. I don't really know how that works, um, but there's a link she just dropped into the chat box and you can 
click on that and it will redirect you to the sessions. It will give everybody an opportunity um, to have both their mic and uh, camera on. I will suggest that once you pop in to just put your uh, mic on mute really quickly while people kind of get in and get settled. Um, we've allocated about a half an hour. It's totally non-led. Um, do not feel obligated to join. It's just if you wanna continue this conversation. Um, so if there's, if everybody's good with it, and I'm sorry we had to cut you off. No. But, um, we, can, we can do the Q&A in there. So, um, so yeah, just, Thank you all again for participating and for sharing all of these incredible stories and information. And we know that this is a really difficult time. And so we appreciate everybody spending some time with us today. Um, and, and we're sending lots of love to everybody. So love and strength. So, yeah.